of Joe Girard and Clemson in the road. Purple Syracuse in the home white as we are underway in what is a terrific ACC battle in February. Two teams trying to bolster that tournament resume. Brown aggressive, swipes it away from Hall and slams it down to open the scoring. When we spoke with Brad Brownell yesterday, uh, he said that was key in this game for Clemson. They cannot turn the ball over. We must keep Syracuse out of transition. Chase Hunter, the immediate answer. You take a look at the starting five for the Orange. J.J. Starling, last seven games, has been in double figures. He has been red hot for this Syracuse team. Has it here. Going against Girard. Through the mitts. Money. Judah Mitz, he's been the go-to guy all season. Well, we have some NBA execs here uh, in the building. Obviously, uh, eyes on Judah Mintz, P.J. Hall, and that's a big-time turnaround by Judah Mintz. Two turnovers caused early by this Syracuse defense. They have started in, dialed in. Starling in attack mode. Rattled in and out, no good. Well, that time they caught Clemson in the mismatch. That time Starling going at P.J. Hall. Just short on the pull-up jumper. Shefflin working against Justin Taylor. Shefflin's been a double-double machine for this Tigers team. Trying to spin his way free, and he does. That's the area of concern for Syracuse. Yes, P.J. Hall gets a lot of attention, but Shefflin going up against a smaller Taylor, and they're going to try to take advantage of that matchup. Brown lines up a wide open three and buries it. You can't ask for a better start uh, if you're Red Autry and Syracuse. Brown, the steal that time, the three. He's locked in early. He has five of the Orange's seven. And after they let up 92 against Louisville on Wednesday, great defensive pressure to start this game. Clark was the open man and made the Orange pay. And Jay, that's all set up uh, by Joseph Gerard. Yeah, he leads them in assist in ACC play. That's a beautiful find by Gerard. Vince walked right into it, couldn't connect. Gerard yet to take a shot back here in the dome against his former team. Syracuse has forced three turnovers in the opening three minutes. They're doing a great job being active in the passing lanes. That time they're trying to post up Shefflin. Again, great hands by Taylor to come up with another steal. Taylor pull up pop. Rattles in and out. Brad Brownell shouting instructions for them to run their offense. Lobbed in, P.J. Hall, he can make it look too easy at times. And I agree with them. The message uh, received, P.J. Hall had not gotten some touches. Uh, he was hot with his team. Again, a guy coming off a 25-point performance on the road at North Carolina. Uh, I assume he's going to get a lot more touches. Eight seconds to shoot. Here's Chris Bell, who had 30 in the win against Louisville on Wednesday. Off to Taylor. Two seconds to shoot. Mintz has to heave it. And hits it. Judah Mintz as the shot clock sounds. Not bad defense of High Clemson. That's just a guy in Judah Mintz hitting the NBA three with the shot clock winding down. Into Hall. Brown, who's already had one steal today, into Shefflin, who travels. 
A terrific start. Two teams that have come out dialed in early. Just getting started. Syracuse energy. And the key thing is he's matched up against P.J. Hall right here. Great denial. Again, we saw practice yesterday. He practiced this shot. After practice, a knocking goes down. As you can tell, that worked. In practice, after practice is paying off, knocking down the three. Yeah, only his fourth made three this season. How about his stat line on Wednesday? He's the only college basketball player to have more than 10 points, five rebounds, five assists, five steals, five blocks, all in one game since 2021. He can do it all. And I think he's the X Factor guy. Yes, Judah Mintz gets a lot of attention, as he should. Uh, but I think he's the guy that draws the matchup of some of these opposing bigs. And uh, none on display tonight, P.J. Hall. That's going to be a key matchup early on. He's doing a great job. Starling lines up a three. Can't connect. Clemson is a perfect four for four from the floor, but they also have four turnovers today. So when they can get the shot off, <laughs> they're perfect. But this Syracuse defense has forced four turnovers of great defensive energy and pressure to start this game. Inside to P.J. Hall. Hunter right back to Hall. The give and go. And P.J. Hall rocks the rim. Beautiful find by Hunter that time. Give and go. Pinpoint passing and... Clemson now falls back in the zone. They played zone that last possession, forced the deep three. If you're Syracuse, be patient. Try to get the ball to that foul line area and then attack from there. Taylor trapped in the corner, tries to go baseline on Clark. Fades away. Preserve two points. Well, that is a beautiful help. D looked like it was going to be an uncontested dunk and came over and broke up a sure deuce. Bell from the corner with the side of the backboard. Turkey's had a great rhythm early. They've come out of this timeout. They've got no points in the last two minutes. Hunter pull up pop. Nothing but the bottom of the net. One of the more underrated guards in the ACC. Just a veteran presence. Beautiful off a high spot ball screen right there. Right in his rhythm. Excellent offense uh, by Clemson the last two possessions. Hunter and Gerard have made a great backcourt duo for the Tigers this season. Two fifth-year players that have played in big games in ACC play. Oh, another shot that's just way off the mark. Right now, uh, Clemson's forcing contested jumpers. And that was not the case to start this game off. Mintz gets into the lane. Syracuse needed that, and Judah Mintz delivers. And that's what Syracuse needs to do. They need to push the pace uh, before this Clemson zone can get set up. That's a tough runner. Uh, in the lane by Judah Mintz. Mintz the near three-minute scoring drought. Brown pokes it away again. Malik Brown has been all over P.J. Hall to start this game. Been super disruptive. Now it's a loaded slate of college basketball today all over ESPN's networks, but the best one, the Sonic Blockbuster. Baylor at Kansas tonight, 6 Eastern time. You do not want to miss it. Well, Jay, the defense uh, that Malik Brown has played on uh, P.J. Hall, and he's, he's going to get a break, and uh, Hall's out of the game as well, too. I think the key thing, though, is he's pushing him out of the paint, making it difficult for him to get the ball two feet or one foot in the paint, and that's creating some disruption on the offense. Quadir Copeland might be the only player you see off the bench for Syracuse. Him and Mohima have come in because this is an orange team with not a lot of depth. The dismissal of Benny Williams and Peter Carey is 
out with an injury today. So Hema and Copeland are six and seven. They probably won't play more than that. Yeah, but they're going to need those to be quality minutes. Again, right now, Red Autry uh, giving his guys, Malik Brown in particular, a blow when P.J. Hall went to the bench. Godfrey. And that's a goal, 10. John C. Wiggins attacking the glass. Easy goaltending call as Clemson edges in front by three. Back and forth we go here at the ACC. Now this time of year, everyone wants to talk bracketology. ESPN's Joe Lenardi has Clemson as one of four ACC teams in his projected field as of this morning. We spoke with Lenardi pregame and asked him about the Tigers' resume. For me, Clemson really gave itself some breathing room with that win in Chapel Hill this week. I think the Tigers are solidly in the field. Uh, I wouldn't get too hung up on the conference standings. In fact, conference record isn't even a data point the committee uses. Now, we can argue whether that's good or bad, but it's a fact. My message to them would be no bad losses. So that's very interesting, talking about Brad Brownell's team that I think wrongly was left out of the tournament a year ago. They seemingly live on the bubble come February and March, but Lenardi has them safely, comfortably in the field, just need to avoid bad losses. They just win, baby, and that's what all yeah, these exactly. coaches, it's as simple as that. But, and I think the, the term bad loss, that's the debate right there again. This league, and I think that's the issue, the ACC Conference, uh, there's some teams in there that some folks may not be aware of, but of the Georgia Techs, the Florida States, the Virginia Techs, uh, the Boston Cubs, those are not bad losses. Those no. are quality teams. It's just a tough conference, and I think uh, that is really where the debate comes in. And it was really interesting to hear him say conference records is not a metric that the committee looks at because that's a shame. <laughs> uh, it might help Clemson, who's sitting at 5-6 and six of the ACC, but... I don't know. I think your, your record in the league you play in, especially a good league like the ACC, should matter. Well, again, right here, they're on the road. Obviously, another opportunity uh, to try to bolster uh, their resume. Oh. Offensive rebound. Kick out. Gerard hits it. His first shot against his former team, and the New York native buries it. And that is a concern. Uh, Red Autry and staff, uh, he talked about rebounding. That's going to be key. That's a second chance opportunity right there. Off the offensive rebound, throw it back out to one of the best three-point shooters in the country. Gerard, who is a four-year starter here at Syracuse, a top 20 player in scoring in program history. And another offensive rebound leads the second chance points for Clemson. They got to put bodies uh, on guys. Again, that's something that Clemson's very good at. They're going to crash the offensive glass. We talked about Syracuse's depth issues. Right now, though, uh, they're having issues on the defensive glass. That's got to change. Bell steps into it, misses. And a foul called on Hema, who's seeing increased minutes today. He's played 28 minutes all season. In conference, the most he's played is four minutes against Boston College, but with Peter Carey unavailable. Benny Williams dismissed from the team earlier this week. Red Autry's looking at his bench saying, we don't have much in the front court. Yeah, depth obviously an issue, and uh, now Malik Brown back in the game. Key thing, foul trouble. Must keep him out of foul trouble. Uh, can ill afford not to have him on the court. Clemson on a 7-0 run, taking control here in the first half. Here's R.J. Godfrey trying to spin his way free, and he hits it. Right now, Clemson is just uh, dominating the paint. Offensive rebounds, and then they are trying to post and attack the paint every possession. Three-minute scoring drought for Syracuse. Mintz comes up empty. It's allowed the Tigers to go on a 9-0 run during this scoring drought. Another foul called. Clemson off the defensive stop right here again. Clear foul. And they're pushing the pace, Clemson. Again, they're being very opportunistic in their transition.
You know, Huck, you never know how a team is going to respond after a huge win on the road like Clemson had on Tuesday night, knocking off number three North Carolina. It was only the second time in program history that the Tigers had won in Chapel Hill. And Brad Brownell told us that it feels like this team, because they're so veteran, has the ability to handle success well. He hasn't seen it. They've been too up and down. Today is a big opportunity to prove they can start stringing wins together. And I thought he gave an interesting payoff to that point. He said he was more concerned about Joseph Gerard yeah. coming back. That energy as opposed to, he said, look, our guys have won big games before. Uh, I just didn't want Joe or the other guys trying to get out of character with his return. Yeah, he said it. These guys want to win this game for Joe Gerard. They know how much it means to the New York native. Great eyes by Dylan Hunter. Tigers three on one. Give and go for an easy transition to timeout Syracuse. The Tigers on a 15 to two run over the last six minutes. They're doubling up the orange, 24-12. to nine, since then, Clemson on a 15 to two run to grab control. The rebounding, Jay, that's the issue right now. Clemson dominating the paint. Right here, offensive rebound, put back. And then they're getting their opportunities in half court. They're attacking the paint. And then transition, uh, they push the pace off of turnovers. A beautiful execution in transition. Right now, 15 to 4 in favor of rebounds for Clemson. And that is the story of this first half thus far. Judah Mitch trying to get the orange going, but stepped on the line. A turnover. Syracuse had great energy, great rhythm in the first five, six minutes of this game, but that is all evaporated with Clemson taking control. And Clemson has cut the turnover, something Brad Brownell talked to us about uh, in our Zoom call with him yesterday. He said, look, uh, we cannot turn the ball over. Now that right, right there takes it. <laughs> but with that, he is hot right now. The only good thing about that, obviously, it's not a live ball turnover. He said, look, uh, we cannot uh, give turnovers to Syracuse and put them in transition. Brad Brownell has a team he feels like to not only get into the NCAA tournament, but make a deep run, a veteran squad that is hungry. You saw that in Chapel Hill on Tuesday, taking down number three, North Carolina, trying to follow it up with another road win this afternoon. Starling, right to the rim, missed it. Chase Hunter. Crafty ball handling, keeps it alive, finds his brother Dylan Hunter. Great hands by Copeland, but Starling could not keep it in play. Right now, Clemson's doing a great job spacing the floor. And they have Syracuse so spread out, they have them chasing over, and they're getting some opportunities with their dribble drives. Well, Syracuse in a scoring ground of four minutes and 38 seconds. It's allowed Clemson to go on an 11-0 run during that drought. Gerard a deep three. Got it! Joe Gerard two for two against his former team. That's a breakdown. Again, you're playing zone. But the one guy you must identify is Joseph Gerard, one of the uh, best three-point shooters in the history of the ACC. Uh, obviously, again, that cannot happen if you're Syracuse. Scoreless for now, more than five minutes. Nice block by Bell, but the Orange needs something on the offensive end. They've been stuck on 12 points for five and a half minutes now. Starling hoping to end the drought. He can't do it. There's a lid on the rim right now for SU. Offensive foul. It is all Clemson right now. Joe Girard cooking. Back in the dome. Great ball movement by Clemson. That scene looks familiar in this building right now. Clemson rolling. For the first time since his transfer to Clemson, four-year starter.
for the Orange. A primarily warm welcome this afternoon. Student section is letting him hear some boos here and there. He's taken two shots, both from three, and no surprise to Syracuse fans that he's made both of them. He had a prolific career. When you look at the stats, his four years in Syracuse is a top 20 scorer in program history. And number three all time with nearly 300 threes made in a Syracuse uniform. And now he is proving that he's a terrific player because he's come to Clemson and given them a big boost. And when we spoke with Brad Brownell yesterday, I asked him, uh, any surprises uh, when you got uh, Joseph Girard and anything uh, stick out after you? He said, no, we got exactly uh, what we thought we were getting. And certainly he's a guy that can score the ball and do it well. Syracuse has fallen into a scoring drought of six minutes now. It's been crippling in this game. It's allowed the Tigers to go on a 14 nothing run. Three on one here for the Orange. Up to Copeland, much needed. That's what they need to do. That's how they started the game off. Turnovers. Uh, their defense is going to get them back in this game. Hall working against Brown. Brown commits the foul. That's been a great matchup to watch in this first half. And the key thing, look where P.J. Hall's catching the ball. Malik Brown's doing an excellent job pushing him out of the paint. Picked up a foul that time again. Speaking with Coach Red Autry, he said, look, we just cannot have him in foul trouble. And looks like Brown picked up another foul. That's the last thing you can afford if you're Syracuse. You just said it. They'd already depleted front court. They are relying on Malik Brown. He picks up two fouls in two seconds. And they're saying he threw a hip check. Shefflin's off to the bench. He's looked like uh, he is shaken up. And again, that's two quick fouls on Brown. Wiggins left alone. Missed it. Judemitz working against Gerard. Leans in. Doesn't fall. Second chance. Judemitz trying to stick with it. Hall rips it away. And then travels. Well, I think right now, Syracuse, they're matching the energy uh, that Clemson has had in this last five minute stretch. This is great work uh, by Judemitz. And Brad Brownell, though, is hot. He felt like. P.J. Hall was grabbed on that rebound. Swatted away by Hunter. Copeland retrieves it. Only five seconds to shoot. Copeland right down the lane. Kick to the corner. Starling. He can't connect. You won't find a better look than that one. You cannot ask for a better look. You're absolutely right. Nice play that time. Shot clock winding down by Copeland. That's one you got to have if you're Syracuse. Wide open corner three. Wiggins steps out. He's off the mark. That's a great block out uh, that time uh, by Malik Brown on P.J. Hall. And they'll live with Clemson. Uh, shooting those jumpers. Just can't get anything going offensively. The Orange is one of their last 12. That doesn't drop from Copeland. Now one for their last 13. And it seems like six or seven shots really have rattled around the rim, hung up there, and then rolled out. Way over the head of Gerard. So Syracuse is forcing turnovers. That's now 10 turnovers by the Tigers in this first half. But they're unable to capitalize on the other end. Yeah, and again, points off of turnovers right now in favor of Clemson. Clemson five points off of turnovers. Syracuse only four, although Syracuse has forced more turnovers. Nicks in attack mode, swatted by Hall. Gerard, great cross court pass. Clemson oh. oh. can't cash in in transition. Mintz driving right at Gerard. 
Swiped away. Well, what's lost in this play of the outlet pass by Malik Brown? Let's see. Mm. And there definitely was some body afterwards. Yeah, the crowd is crying again. I think that was after he lost the ball. And again, though, Malik Brown were really impressed with his rebounding and then his outlet passes, which led to an opportunity for Mentz right there, just unable to finish. Dump down low. Brown finally beats Hall. What a pass by Copeland. Again, Copeland, one of the better passers in the ACC. That's a beautiful lob pass to Malik Brown. And Hall answers on the other end in perfect position to put that home. And that's set up, though, Jay, because of dribble penetration. That gets the bigs moving and then gives P.J. Hall an opportunity for uh, that offensive rebound. Copeland trying to get this Syracuse team going, but nothing will fall. Hunter spun his way free. Can't hit it. Another offensive rebound. Cashes in for two points. When you have a team that attacks the offensive blast like Clemson does, as soon as the ball goes up in the air, if you're watching, you better put a body on him. Now Clemson has 11 second chance points. They are dominating the glass. Well, right here, Copeland with the beautiful pass, but it has been... To Eastern, we have the women's basketball matchup of the day on ESPN. Paige Beckers and UConn at undefeated number one South Carolina. You do not want to miss it to Eastern time tomorrow on ESPN. Here at Syracuse, Malcolm Huckabee, Jay Alter with you. The Orange led 10-9 early in this game, started 4 of 8. They looked good. There was a good energy. Since they are just 3 of 21, and that takes the energy out of the game and has allowed Clemson to build a 15-point lead. Yeah, and I think a lot of that, Jay, uh, they've had some open looks. You look at their numbers, 2 of 11 from the three-point line, 18%, 7 of 29 from the floor, 24%. Uh, they've just missed some shots. Uh, to go along, though, with, I think, the big discrepancy, rebounding. 26-9 to nine in favor of Clemson, total rebounds. That's really difficult to win when it's that lopsided. Now the officials deciding to move it to a side out instead of underneath the hoop. If you're Syracuse, you'd, you'd have to lean on a Judah Mintz to just try and get hot here at the end of the first half. Give yourself something to go into halftime with. Well, Clemson's done a great job trying to keep him and keeping him out of the paint and then forcing jumpers. Uh, they've kept Syracuse out of transition, and then uh, they've limited the dribble drives, which has not broken down their defense. Bell, step back three. Got it! And Syracuse needed it. Chris Bell's first basket of the afternoon, and it's a three. You're talking about a guy coming off a 30-point performance uh, where he was 8 of 10 from the three-point line. Big-time shooter. P.J. Hall continues to show why he's one of the best in the ACC. Malik Brown with two fouls. If I'm Clemson, I'm going at him every time. Again, if P.J. Hall catches the ball two feet in the paint like that, he's going to score every time. Copeland rejected by Hall through the legs to Bell. Did well to keep the possession alive. Bell can't connect that time. And another rebound by P.J. Hall. Clemson's 24 points in the paint of their 33. It's been a simple game plan. Get it into Hall. It has been. And again, they've attacked the paint uh, in this game. Clemson, uh, if you look at uh, points... Uh, in the paint, uh, that number also has been dominated by Clemson. 24 points in the paint uh, for Clemson, 10 for Syracuse. Well, look at those numbers for P.J. Hall. He has put himself in the ACC Player of the Year conversation. He's an automatic first-teamer. Good look from Hunter, goes begging. 
And you'll live with that if you're Syracuse. Uh, no Joseph Gerard on of the court. Uh, you'll live with perimeter jumpers. Bell hits it again. Chris Bell starting to heat up here at the end of the half. Beautiful offense. Might be their best offensive possession of the game. Time out, Clemson. We'll step aside for 30 seconds. Homaglow just cleaned my entire house for $19. Seriously, $19. They showed up right on time and did my dishes, my laundry, they even cleaned my windows. You just pick a date, pick a cleaner, and enjoy a spotless house for $19. I love using Home Aglow, and I think you will too. I can feel the winds of change. Syracuse has lacked offense in this first half, but Chris Bell back to back threes starting to heat up. You look what he did on Wednesday night against Louisville, career high 30 points on eight made threes. Maybe it's Bell who has the hot hand here. And I talked to an NBA scout before the game, and they said, a very interesting uh, comment about him it says every game I've come to to scout Syracuse he's the first guy out on the court getting shots up working on his mechanics it's no wonder why uh, he is one of the best uh, three-point shooters in the ACC Gerard back into the game Copeland steals it away but couldn't save it Adrian Autry and Judah Mintz and Copeland saying that I was tripped up. Uh, let's see right here again. Yes, definitely. I think that's inadvertent. And let's see if he got on the line. Hmm. I think he might have kept it in play there. Yeah, I'm not sure where. I'm not sure he stepped on the line. So, again, I think he's. I'm not sure what the call is. Well, the officials discussing this. And the shot clock resets. Mm. That's a tough break for Syracuse. Looked like they were going to have a turnover and a chance to score. A potentially big swing at the end of this first half. Hall goes right into Hema. P.J. Hall, he has feasted in this first half. That's a tough move. Again, that's not an easy runner going away from the basket. And that is why uh, P.J. Hall, uh, I believe, will be pay playing for a nice paycheck when he leaves Clemson. Uh, that's a big showing off some skills by uh, playing off the bounce. 15 seconds remaining in this first half. It's a comfortable cushion for Clemson right now. Trying to add to it. Seven seconds to work with. Here's Gerard against his former team. Gives it up to Clark. One second left. Hunter beats the buzzer. Got it off just in time. Adrian Autry disagrees. The officials will review it. And if it is good, uh, you cannot close out the half any better. If you're Clemson, I think that is going to be good. Looks like the ball was out of his hands. Uh, you cannot break down in the game, in the half situation that time, attacking the zone. P.J. Hall, who Clemson fans call the Hall American, 10.6 rebounds in that first half. And yeah, you take a look at the rebounds coming into today, should be even. But it was all Tigers. It was, and I, I think uh, a couple things. Uh, offensively, Syracuse, uh, they got stagnant. They missed some shots, but I think on the other side defensively, uh, you can't give up dribble drives. Uh, that shifts your defense and moves your bigs out of position to rebound. And offensively, Syracuse a season low, 24 points of that first half. They need a spark on the offensive end. Start with the ball, trailing by 13. Down but not out here at home. 
Here's J.J. Starling, a quiet first half for him. Fading away, hits it! Maybe that'll get the Orange going. That's a tough turnaround. Shot clock winding down, and Starling uh, knocked down a jumper. That's a great start uh, of the second half for Syracuse. Starling, who was scoreless in the first half, his first made shot today. Last seven games, he's been all double figures. You could argue he's been the most consistent scorer on this Syracuse team as of late. And 0 for 5 in the first half. Good to see him get going to start the second. They're trying to post up Shefflin uh, against Taylor. Clark can't connect. And they call the foul against Shefflin. Push him to back. Brad Brown now not happy. Let's see if he got him right here again. Yeah, that's again. That's an elbow in the back now again. May not look like much, but Sheffman's a pretty strong guy. And ref felt that definitely uh, caused him not, Taylor, not being able to get up and get that rebound. And Syracuse will take any help they can get on the glass at the moment. Deep three. Bell left it short. Hunter in attack mode. Couldn't connect. Starling lines up a three. Drills it. JJ Starling starting to come alive. And he's playing with so much more confidence. Uh, when we spoke with Red Arthur, he said at the beginning of the season, he would not have taken those shots. Uh, he is playing with so much more confidence and less hesitation. Poked away by Brown. Looking for Mintz. Feeds it back to Brown. Rejected by Hall. P.J. Hall, great transition defense. Well, I've been impressed with Hall's defense. In particular, his blocks, he's kept them in play. Syracuse forcing turnovers. Now can they cash in on the other end? Bell for three. Plus the foul. Chris Bell with a chance for a four-point play. Well, they needed a spark to set this second half up. Judah Mintz with the dribble drive, and Bell continues his hot shooting. What a start to this second half. Syracuse on an 8 nothing run. In the first two minutes and 30 seconds of this second half, Bell can't complete the four-point play. Wiggins to Gerard trying to cry at the crowd, and he does. Well, that's an underrated uh, part of his game. Everybody thinks he's a catch-and-shoot guy. He is very good off the bounce. That's a beautiful pull-up off a closeout by Judah Mintz. Bell off the cut draws another foul. Back to the line. A beautiful cut right here by Bell. Again, take the contact almost and one. Uh, but Clemson went back to their zone. And again, that's how you're going to have to attack it. Get it to that short corner or wing and then attack the middle. And Bell continues uh, to shoot the ball. Lights out. That last game against Louisville. Eight threes made in that game where he went off for 30 points. Hey, he's a guy that added uh, 10 pounds uh, during the offseason. And I believe when it's all said and done, he's a guy that will play at the next level because of his ability uh, to knock down threes. Clemson's largest lead was 15. That is shrunk to five. The crowd back in it at the start of this second half. Locked in. Taylor swipes it away. Bell working on Gerard. Former teammates going at it. 
Bell certainly has the size advantage, but it's Gerard who pokes it away. Beckman <laughs> lost the ball. Clemson's turning it over. At a high clip, 15 turnovers today. And they're trying to post up Sheflin. Sheflin just lost the post entry pass that time. Brown going right into Sheflin. He misses it. A four second half turnovers in the opening four minutes for the Tigers. Oh, trying to muscle his way into Brown. Leaves it for Sheflin. And one. Ian Sheflin. Count it plus the foul. Well, this is what Clemson has been trying to do. Uh, post up all and Sheflin. A beautiful interior passing by P.J. Hall out of the double team. Passing out of double teams like they did on the previous play that led to the and one opportunity. Well, all eight players that have touched the court for Clemson today have scored. And 30 of the Tigers' 41 points have come in the paint. Ian Scheffler, the junior from Loganville, Georgia, at the line to try and complete his and one. And he does. And Syracuse started the second half on an 8 nothing run to cut the Clemson lead to five. Can they continue the comeback effort? Plenty of time. Right now, uh, Clemson in that 3-2 zone. And key thing, if you're Clemson, you got to identify Bell. I can't give him any open looks. And then if you're Syracuse, attack that paint, uh, either at the foul line or short corner. Starling a deep three. Left it short. The foul called on Godfrey. Had a hook on Brown underneath. And I love how Malik Brown attacks both the defensive and offensive glass. He does a great job. Ball goes in the air. And he is relentless in his pursuit after uh, anything coming off the glass. Here's Bell. Another offensive rebound. Starling through traffic gets it to go. J.J. Starling, all seven of his points have come in the second half. And give Malik Brown half a point for that. That's an unbelievable tip back out to keep that play alive by Malik Brown. Hunter down the lane, tangled up. Starling with great defense there. And watch Malik Brown, again, the previous uh, keeping that play alive, and then Sterling with the body control. Syracuse bench wanted the M1 on that one. Two possession game into Wiggins who jams it right in the face of Brown. That's a breakdown, miscommunication. Out of bounds underneath, that should never happen. Uh, if you're Syracuse, give up a uncontested dunk underneath the basket. Copeland's been quiet today, trying to ah. spin his way free. So crafty, Quadir Copeland. That was tough. A great ball fakes uh, by Judah Mitch to set that pass up to the foul line. Hunter in attack mode, right to the rack for two. Well, he has just been solid. Uh, that's his eighth point to go along with five assists. Hey. Brown on a rack attack. Both of these teams trading punches, finding a rhythm. We have seen seven straight makes between these two teams. Clemson's four for four. Syracuse has made three in a row. Hall pops up. Stolen away. Here's Starling. And he draws the foul. 
Explosive in transition. J.J. Starling heads to the line for two. Syracuse has matched the physicality and pace uh, that Clemson has. I love the play by J.J. Starling. Pushing the pace and getting out in transition. Starling, who was scoreless in the first half, now has eight in the second. Coming on strong, as we remind you, NBA Saturday primetime later tonight on ABC. 8.30 Eastern time, Devin Booker and KD take it on Steph and the Warriors. You do not want to miss it. Coverage tips with NBA countdown at 8 Eastern. Well, Jay, interesting speaking with uh, Red Autry and the coaching staff about Starling. Uh, his progression uh, really has been key. Uh, I think to go along uh, with Judah Mintz, but his aggression, a much more aggressive. Great ball movement leads to a Shefflin dunk. Ian Shefflin ripping the rim off there. Well, it's all the interior passing. That's a beautiful pass of uh, that time. Both these teams doing a great job finding cutters to the basket. Copeland through the spin cycle, foul called. The Huck, this is the opposite of the first half where both teams had stretches of no scoring. Clemson has made five in a row. Syracuse has made three in a row and has done a nice job getting to the foul line. So both teams in a much better offensive rhythm here in the second half. And I think a big reason why for Syracuse, uh, they've limited uh, the paint touches and offensive rebound for Clemson. They've gotten stops and then they've been able to get out in transition. Yeah, this team much more comfortable in transition than in the half court. Yeah, absolutely, and that was something uh, Brad Brownell was concerned about. Keeping Syracuse uh, out of transition. In particular, he said, Judah Mintz, you got to keep him out of the paint. Gerard steps into a three, knocks it down. Joe Gerard, he is three for three from deep against his former team. And that's on Judah Mintz right there. You go for the steal, you don't get it. And the end result, Joseph, Joe Gerard with a wide open three. Again, this is all set up. Judah Mintz, you go for the gamble right here. You don't get it, you're out of uh, place. And Joe Gerard, you give him an open look, he is going to make you pay. And now seven points away from 2,000. 1,652 of those were scored in a Syracuse uniform. Gerard in trouble. With a stay Clemson ball underneath their own hoop. And out of bounds underneath Syracuse goes to the zone. That's a travel. Shefflin shuffled his feet, and that's a 17th turnover today for Clemson. And the only thing uh, that you'll look at and be, I guess, somewhat happy about is the points off of turnovers really uh, have not been a big issue for Clemson. Uh, only eight points off of turnovers for Syracuse. And they failed to capitalize, but still within striking distance here. Down eight with 12 to play. Mintz in attack mode, leans in. It doesn't drop. Finally, poked home, Claudier Copeland in perfect position. Uh, he is the vocal leader of this team. That's a great offensive rebound put back. Jefflin lost his footing. A foul called. He'll be at the line when we come back. Well, we're seeing some high level offense right here the dunk and coach Autry loving that uh, but Shefflin uh, with the answer and then Gerard with the deep three four and a half I'm hammering the <laughs> over I think it should be more like six because you take a look at the ACC nine and three against the Big 12 non-conference strength of schedule a lot stronger than some of the other conferences that are getting more bids and I think the most important thing Huck is you have to look at 
how historically these teams have fared in the tournament and nobody over the last two seasons two seasons where the narrative has been the ACC is quote unquote down they're getting less teams in but more are making the final four more, more are going deeper in the tournament you have mic drop moments and that right there I think is a mic drop moment winning matters Again, don't tell me winning does not matter and the last two seasons and nobody has done it better or more than the ACC. Again, I think it's a hard argument. I know uh, folks want to use metrics and so forth. Uh, but when you look at these teams, which we cover, and then you look at the success that they have had, hard to argue uh, that they should not have uh, more than five uh, teams into the tournament. Gerard. Contested three. That's his first miss of the afternoon. A perfect four for four against his former team before that misfired three. Mintz going right at Gerard. Makes it a one possession game. He's smiling right now, and him and Joe Gerard are having a little conversation. Former teammates, and Mintz going right at him. And Brad Brownell has seen enough. Timeout Clemson. The crowd back in it. One possession game here at Syracuse. Syracuse done it. Uh, the backcourt of Syracuse. Starling and Mintz. Uh, those two have been fantastic in the second half right here. Starling with the three. And then Judah Mintz doing what he does best. Off the bounce. That's the reason why he's one of the better guards. Not just in the ACC, but in college basketball. So difficult to keep out of the paint. And that has been the story of the second half. And how about this? The Orange with already more points in the second half than they had the entire first half. The crowd back in it. One possession game. Gerard against his former team. Drills it. Joe Gerard has made some big threes in his return to the dome. Young players, if you want to learn how to play without the ball, watch that last possession by Joe Gerard. He put a Judah Mintz really in the spin cycle coming off screens and then footwork to perfection and then bury the three. Starling has a step on Gerard, beats him off the glass. J.J. Starling, 10 points all in this second half. Now 15 games this season in double figures. Paul regathers it. Watch how active Syracuse is in the passing lanes. Oh, they're doing a great job of being active with their hands. Godfrey spinning his way in right past Copeland for an easy two. And that's the problem, though, Syracuse is having with the three-guard lineup. As Clemson, rightfully so, going at that matchup with their three, where Syracuse has given up a lot of size. Syracuse has made their last four shots. Darling right to the rim, lays it up and in, back-to-back -back buckets for J.J. Starling. Hunter draws the foul on the floor. So as good as the Syracuse offense has been, Huck, they've made their last five. Clemson has made eight of their last nine. And the Syracuse bench feels like that contact, and they have a valid reason, and they're going to go take a look at it. I think they Leading could potentially, the yeah, again. Now, based on the first replay that I saw, it looks like Starling's in legal guarding position, and I think that's the key thing. And again, legal guarding position. Again, he's trying to get in front, back in front. And then the uh, contact is initiated uh, by Hunter. Again, I think that no call, if anything, but they're taking a look at it right now. And, and Red Autry was hot at that. Again, I think he's got a valid argument uh, on that. Again, the contact was initiated uh, by Hunter, and I think that's the key thing. You know, it's been an emotional week for Syracuse on Tuesday. Adrian Autry has to make the tough decision to dismiss Benny Williams 
from the program on Wednesday. They win a thriller against Louisville, 94-92. A win today would do wonders in stabilizing the program right now. This is a big call at a four-point game. We already saw the ACC standings. Mm -hmm. uh, we talked with Joe Lenardi. Uh, these teams right now, it's a logjam right now in the middle of that pack. These two teams are squarely in the middle of it. It is a key game. A massive moment in a critical conference clash here in Syracuse. And the officials know that, and that's why they're taking their time. They know they need to get this right. Oh, yeah, and again, I, I think it's all in how they interpret it, and it's a huge swing right now. 8.56 to go in this game, and Syracuse trailing by uh, four. Certainly a huge call, and somebody's going to walk out of this one <laughs> unhappy. Either Brad Brown now is going to be happy, or Coach Red Autry is going to be happy in this one right here. Ramey Steins is coming over, the official to give the call to Malcolm Huckabee here. Huck, what do we got? He seemed disappointed telling me this, but he said, we're gonna stick with the original call. And what they're saying is, is because of the arm, he felt like Starling's arm was out there which we're not seeing in the replay right here. Again, they're calling Starlin's arm right there. That's what they're calling because he's got his arm on him. Now, again, whether or not we agree with it or not, that's what they are sticking with, and they're going to call that a block. So because the contact was initiated before the shooting motion, it's ball underneath the hoop. But because the arm also came before the hunter elbow, it stays Clemson ball. God break. Grabs his own miss, hands off Wiggins, no good. And it's Syracuse ball. And the home fans here thinking, the ball don't lie. <laughs> ball don't lie moment right there, but certainly excellent blocking out that time by Syracuse to keep Clemson off the offensive glass. Shot clock at 10. Mintz lost the handle. It falls to Bell. Corner three. Missed it. Falls right back to him. Second chance. Another miss. Both were short. Godfrey. Draws the foul. Thought Malik Brown might have tied him up there momentarily. And that's Brown's third. Not a good foul by Brown. And the first three uh, by of Syracuse, not a bad look by Bell, uh, but that foul by Brown, ill-advised, uh, do not want to foul, 8-12 to go, let the ball go, uh, you're too important uh, to this uh, team to pick up a foul that way. Adrian Autry leads Brown on the court with those three fouls, doesn't have much choice with a depleted front court. Godfrey couldn't handle it. Quadir Copeland dialed in defensively. That's the 18th turnover for Clemson today. Syracuse right in it, trailing by four. For five from outside. He's in fuego. He's hit, that was the easiest shot he's taken. His shot quality has been really difficult. And the other side, their defense has been elite. And a close one coach at Baton Rouge. Well, they've done a much better job of getting Will Baker under control. But LSU is driving like this. They're taking long closeouts. This is going to go down to the wire. I, was, I had the over-under on Ed Fuego at 6 o'clock tonight. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's shaping up to be a fun finish here in Syracuse. Clemson led by as many as 15 in Joe Girard's return to the Dome, but Syracuse has clawed it back to only down four. Girard, four made threes. It feels like whenever Syracuse gets within striking distance. Their former teammate hits a big shot. So much on the line in this game in terms of positioning, NCAA tournament and ACC standings. Oh 
Here's Judah Mintz. And now Copeland. Three seconds on the shot clock. Bell has to get rid of it. He does. And draws the foul. So Chris Bell back to the foul line where he is two for three today. And Clemson has changed defenses. Uh, that time they go man. They played a lot of 3-2 zone. And Syracuse in the second half has done a nice job attacking it, being patient. That time Bell not settling for a jumper and driving the ball. And that is the fourth foul against Chauncey Wiggins, the sophomore from Clemson. He's looking over to the bench. Nobody's checking in for him, so Wiggins will stay in the game with four fouls. It's 7.26 to play as Bell makes it a two-point game. Well, Clemson has been trying to post up a Wiggins versus a Copeland. And let's see if though they give P.J. Hall a touch. Hall oh, right to the rim. One-handed jam. The Hall American. And that'll quiet this crowd. If I'm Clemson, I'm giving him a touch every offensive possession. Uh, that guy is uh, right at the top of the list uh, for player of the year discussion in the ACC. Brown lost the handle. Could have cut the Clemson lead back to two. Wiggins double team. Ball's loose. Copeland has it. Clemson, their 19th turnover today. Get Syracuse cash in. Rolls off the rim, no good. Well, excellent transition opportunity. Well, that time by Starlin, just unable to finish. Hall oh, lines up a three. Missed it. Tapped out, but Brown there for Syracuse. In a critical conference game in the ACC, Clemson clinging to a four-point lead on the road. Here's Chris Bell. Can't connect. That's a great block out by P.J. Hall. Uh, that time on Malik Brown. And again, if I'm Clemson, I'm going right back to Hall. Give him a touch. Wiggins left wide open. Falls off the rim, no good. You can't get a better look than that. Cross court, again, that's all set up uh, by uh, the spacing. Again, you can't ask for a better look. You're absolutely right. Wide open corner three off a beautiful skip pass. Shot clock down to 10. Mints on the move. Fade away. Contested. Missed it. That's great defense by Hunter that time against the Judah Mintz. Tried to squeeze it to Hall. Mintz there to intercept. Starling in attack mode. Keeps it alive. Ten seconds to shoot. Starling with all 12 points. In the second half, make it 14, putting the star in Starlin. Well, that is a tough move. Uh, they had him isolated on P.J. Hall. Soft touch with the finger roll. Copeland to tie it at 59, and he's fouled. Chase Hunter had no choice but to deny Copeland the rim. This is great anticipation right here. Copeland with the steal. And that's a smart foul, though, uh, by Hunter, because uh, that was going to be an uncontested layup. That is now 21 turnovers that Clemson has suffered. Syracuse has turned it into 15 second chance point or points off turnovers. And now a chance to tie it at 59. Missed it. 
Well, a Clemson lead that was once 15 is down to one. Four minutes to go in the dome. Oh, trying to muscle it in, and he draws the foul. That's where Clemson needs P.J. Hall. Again, put him in a high ball screen, dive him, and then let him try to post up in the paint. Again, he is so tough right here. Spin move, and that's a clear foul. And if you're Clemson to close out this game, 4 one to go, uh, I would run my offense through P.J. Hall. A Clemson team that went on the road and beat number three North Carolina Tuesday night now looking for what would be another massive road win in the ACC. We spoke with the ESPN brackets Alice Joe Lenardi. He told us Clemson right now comfortably in the projected field but this road win combined with Carolina on Tuesday would do wonders for the Tigers resume. What's well, interesting when we talk to all these ACC coaches just win that's on their mind and everything else uh, takes care of itself. A haul though with the miss, 81% from the line in ACC play. That's a big miss though. Two point game down the stretch. Mince off to Starling. He's had the hot hand. All 14 points have come in the second half to tie it. He is scoring on all three levels. We saw the finger roll before that time. Shot clock winding down, showing off the mid-range. That's a beautiful pull-up jumper. To Hall. Spinning his way free and fires Clemson back in front. It's simple. P.J. Hall needs to touch the ball every time every offensive possession if you're Clemson and then for Syracuse you're going to play through your backcourt Starling and Mintz let those guys go make a play contested shot Mintz misses it short P.J. Hall gasping for breath walking up the court this has been a physical game Hunter takes it himself right down the lane. Big make there for Chase Hunter, and it's a four-point lead. Adrian Autry takes the timeout. 2.28 to play. J.J. Starling willing Syracuse to the finish line. Clemson a four-point lead, 2.28 left. Coming up in under 12 minutes, top of the hour, Coach Iowa State 13-0 at home. Well, and Taman Lipsy is such a big part of that because he sets the point of attack defensively. He's shooting it better. He's got a big matchup today with uh, Tennyson. And a big thing, big problem for Emmanuel Miller and the Hot Horn Frogs is uh, Lipsy didn't play in the first game, which the Cyclones won. And he's back in this game. Miller's going to have a big day. He did in the first game. He has to do a better job getting his team out in transition, handling the pressure, and do not turn the ball over. Hilton Magic's a real thing. Hard to play there. He's got several 20-point games. That's coming up at the top of the hour. Yeah, good one following us here in the ACC, Clemson and Syracuse. The Tigers trying to cling to a road win. A four-point lead, 2.28 to play. Malcolm Huckabee, what's going to separate these two teams down the stretch? I think Chase Hunter, he has been the X factor for me uh, in this uh, game uh, for Clemson. You look at his numbers, 10 points, three rebounds, and seven assists. Uh, he has been huge uh, playing the point guard position for Clemson. Syracuse ball trailing by four. Starling's had the hot hand. Has it here. All 16 of his points scored in the second half. Vince gives it up to Copeland. Check to make sure that he was in bounds. Vince lost the handle. Swiped by Hunter. Again, he's done a little bit of everything for this Clemson team. Gerard goes right into Mintz, no call. Shefflin open for three. Get it! Ian Shefflin drills it. But they can beat you in so many different ways. That time, Mintz falls down, and then it opens up your D. 
Fade away Mintz. This time foul called against Hunter. And this is all set up right here. Mintz uh, not on Gerard, and then a wide open Shefflin. We talked about Gerard. Yes, he can shoot, but he leads Clemson in ACC play in assist. That's a beautiful find off a of breakdown. Syracuse had rallied back to tie it at 60. Since then, Clemson on a 7 0 run. And a missed free throw there from Judah Mintz. Well, make or miss, if you're Syracuse now, you're going to have to pick up full and try to force some turnovers. Minute 39 to go. Two possession game. Clemson in the driver's seat trying to close out what would be their second road win of the week. Number three, North Carolina on Tuesday and now trying to escape the dome with a win. Chaplin, great patience to lay it up and in. And that's the key word, veteran team. Uh, we talked about that with Clemson. Uh, they are one of the more experienced teams uh, in the country, and that's beautiful offense against pressure. Great individual effort there from Copeland, who fouls Gerard. That's the one guy you don't want to send to the foul line, and Syracuse should know that. Their former teammate of four years started all 125 games that he played in a Syracuse uniform. Took a pretty good shot that time from Copeland. And they're going to take a look at this. Now, again, I think I'm not sure how much of the face he caught. And it's definitely a play on the ball. And I think that's the key thing now. Again, I don't think anything is going to warrant more than a common foul. Let's take a look. Again, he's trying to steal the ball. And I'm not sure. I think that's more Joe sold that one. Uh, I'm not sure how much contact he made with his face, and I would be surprised if this thing goes anything more than a common foul. As you said, flagrant one would be not a legitimate play on the ball. You felt like it was. Clearly a situation you're trying to steal the ball. Legitimate play on the ball, obviously, and then I think excessive. Now, I think that was more a Gerard. He definitely sold that one a little bit. And really, uh, again, if it was really that hard, he probably would have grabbed that his face afterwards. I'm not sure how much contact he made. Well, Gerard, 93% from the foul line this season. In his Syracuse career, he was 88%. So the Orange fans and players know this is not the guy you want at the foul line. Yeah, he's almost automatic. And again, big reason why. It's a luxury to have him out on the court. It's a luxury to have him on the court at the end of games. And you have one of the better free throw shooters in college basketball on the line. And now just three points shy of 2,000 in his college career, 1,652 of those points scored in a Syracuse uniform. I had a chance to speak with Coach Jerry Mack uh, before the game. He said, I got mixed feelings about seeing him in this. He's happy for the young man, but he said, look, I watched this young man win a state championship in football right in this building and created some memories four years that he had him here at Syracuse. Now or never time for the Orange. Copeland draws the foul. Not a good foul by P.J. Hall at all. Again, no need to foul in that situation. Does a couple of things. Stops the clock and then allows Syracuse to set up their full court pressure. Copeland at 67% on the season from the line. Opportunity to make it a two possession game again. And this is where time becomes an issue for Syracuse. The key thing is inbounding the ball if you're Syracuse. You want to make sure you have a safety back. You don't want to get beat long and give up layups. And Gerard is fouled again. 
the one guy you can't send to the foul line. And they're trying to trap him. Credit Joe Girard, though. He's just running out of the traps. They're trying to trap him in the corner, and he can, he's aware of that, catches it, and then he's on the move as soon as he catches it. Now, what a moment this could be for Joe Girard. Trying to close out a game where he would come back and beat his former team. And if he makes this next foul shot, he will hit 2,000 career points. 1,652 of those scored in a Syracuse uniform. And that is his 2,000th collegiate point, and he does it in the dome. Special moment for Joe. It really is, and that ball did not even touch the rim. Bell, Syracuse needs this three, and Bell delivers. The Orange cut it to five with 52 seconds remaining. Now this has been a great back and forth game and our Saturday slate is loaded here on ESPN. Six Eastern tonight, Sonic Blockbuster, Baylor and Kansas. You don't want to miss it, six Eastern time. So Joe Girard in his return to the Dome, 18 points against his former team, a team he started four years for. He's top 20 in program history and scoring at Syracuse now a proud member of the Clemson Tigers he said this week I'll be Syracuse for life once this season is over I'll root for the orange but today it's about going into the dome getting a win he's 52 seconds away from doing it yeah and coach Red Autry said the same as well too I cheer for the young man Joe happy for him except today and certainly again he has been huge in their success on that previous play, though, nice little up fake by Bell. Side a step and then make the three. Now you get a chance to set up your defense. Key thing, if you're Syracuse, deny Joe Girard or try to get the ball out of his hands without fouling. Again, that's easier said than done. The last two possessions, uh, he's done a nice job moving without the ball and then continuing his progress once he catches it. The Syracuse has gifted Clemson four points on Joe Girard foul shots here on the previous two possessions. And I think the key right now, uh, Judah Mintz is face guarding Joe Girard. You got to switch on any screen and then try to keep the ball out of his hands. Chefflin in trouble, gets it into Hall, hands off Girard. Clemson needs to get it over the line, and they do with Hunter. Right to the rim, scoop to the hoop, Chase Hunter. Player to game in the second half right here. Again, Chase Hunter, the awareness. We talked about their experience. A lot of times, guys would have pulled this out. He knows he has the advantage of beautiful reverse layup and finish uh, to put his team uh, back up seven. Coming up next, it's TCU and Iowa State will get you to Ames as soon as this one is done in Syracuse. And Jay, as we start talking about tournament resumes and teams that could uh, potentially go on a run, you got to start thinking about Clemson uh, in that fashion. Again, uh, coming off a win on the road against North Carolina. And then they're following up against a very good Syracuse team, putting on a really good team performance. Well, they have shown that they can get wins on the road. They're deep. They're veteran. This is a very talented Clemson team. 42 seconds away from escaping with another road win. If you're Syracuse, uh, still some time. You got to go quick. Yeah, Mintz doesn't have time. Brown, a deep three. Fell off the rim, no good. And a ton of time running off the clock. Looks like Syracuse is basically going to just let this one play out. The 25 seconds came off the clock there. Yeah, and really, Gerard had the ball, but 
It looks like Clemson is going to close this one out. Take a look at the numbers. Four players uh, in double digits. Uh, but if you look back at the tape, uh, Jay, uh, I think it was uh, the dominance in the paint and also the rebounding. Uh, you look at these final numbers, and they're going to be lopsided in favor of Clemson in those areas. Right now, 41 rebounds for Clemson to 24 uh, for Syracuse. Syracuse down to their final 15 seconds. And they turn it over. So the Orange came back and tied this game at 60, but then Clemson found a second gear. They finished the week with two big road wins in the ACC and win this 77-68. 48 points in the paint. They dominated the glass. It was an all-around team performance. Clemson is for real a team uh, that could potentially go on a deep NCAA tournament run. Clemson has helped their NCAA tournament resume this week, a win against number three, North Carolina, and then they take down Syracuse 77 68. For our terrific crew, Malcolm Huckabee, I'm Jay Alter saying so long from Syracuse. Let's get you to Ames, TCU.